Within Auto Part and Trader, we have the ability to maintain and act upon a part's mins and maxes. If you have parts which require theirs to be updated, then you can import a file with the mins and maxes that you have created for those parts using several methods. In this video, I will run through how we can do this using block import. Alternative methods would include using the general import routine, which is especially useful if you have multiple branches, or using the min and max recalculation facility, if you have been trading those parts. First of all, you will have to create a source file with the part number, mins and maxes that you want to import. As you can see, my file is very simple. I have a product ID or part number, followed by the min and then lastly the max. Once we have the file ready, we can start the import process. So within Autopart or Trader, you should go to the database, block changes, and then open the block import tab. The first thing that you'll want to do is click the file name box, then hit search. This will bring up a browser. So we can navigate to the file you want to import and then double click it or select it and then hit OK. We then use the supplier field to select and enter our supplier. In this case, my supplier is going to be BRT bearings, so I enter BRT as my supplier code. We then move on down to the options and make sure that update existing parts, price and product details is ticked. On this occasion, we do not need to select to import new parts as I am only updating the ones already on my system. And I highly recommend that you verify Importers proposed changes is also ticked. Once all of the options are set up correctly, we hit OK to proceed to the Import Definition screen. All we need to do here is select the correct fields. So from the drop down box, we select Part Number, Minimum Stock, and Maximum Stock. Once you have selected the correct fields, tick Validate Second Record if you have column headings so that we don't try and import them. We hit OK and the system will show us the result of the import. Once the import is done, we can go over to the Proposed Changes tab to verify that the changes are what we actually expected. When you enter the screen, you will see any proposed changes that have not yet been completed or cancelled. Select the line that you want to investigate and highlight it. Click on this and then amend. This will show you the part number affected, the from value and the new value. Once you are happy with the changes, select the lines to authorise and then press OK. As one final check, we can just go into the product and price file maintenance section and check a part or two to make sure that the updates are correct. I will enter a part from my file, BRT, BRT, 1416. We can see that it has a minimum stock of 7 and a maximum stock of just 21. If we take a moment to cross-reference that with our file, we can see that that is in fact correct. I would also like to quickly walk you through the importing of just a net purchase price from a supplier file. We will use the same screens and the same procedure as before. So let's go back into Block Import tab via the Database menu and the Block Changes screen. As before, Click on the file name box and then hit search. Navigate to the file you want to import and double click on it to select it or just hit OK. We then enter our supplier and once again I'll be using BRT as my supplier code. Then move down to the options section to make sure that they are correct and as always it is also a good idea to verify that the import as proposed changes option is ticked. Once all of your options are set up we can hit OK and continue to the import definition screen. Here we will only have to select two fields the part number and the net purchase price field. Once you have allocated the correct fields, tick the validate second record box and hit OK to start the import. And then once the import is complete, we can do a quick check in proposed changes using the amend button again before finalising the data update. Once you are happy with the proposed changes, then go ahead and authorise the data update. As one final check, we can go into product and price file maintenance. We then enter a part and we can look at the pricing section. In this case we want to look at the supplier cost prices tab. Find the line for the supplier that you have just updated. In this instance I have just the one and that's for BRT. Then you can compare the figures on your system now against what is in your price file. Whilst you are getting used to how it all works my advice is to create small files with just a few parts, maybe five, in order to test the block import routines. Also make sure that you have the import as proposed changes selected each time. I hope that this tutorial helps you understand more about the block import routines. If you require further assistance then please contact the service desk. If you would like to be kept up to date with the ongoing developments at MAM Software then please follow us on social media, YouTube and our community portal.